Hi, um, in a minute I'm going to settle down and do some cutting and we're going to try and get in really close on that cutting because I know I've had a lot of questions um, and requests to see that so I will certainly do that for you. Um, before I want to start I just want to show you this drawing for a new design that I'm working on because a little while ago we made a film of me painting a cloud onto the lino and it just went like that it was perfect immediately and I wanted to show you this drawing to show you that that is rarely the case for me and hopefully you can see enough detail to see the masses of rubbing out and redrawing and changes and things so this is a bit of Buckinghamshire landscape I'm based in the north of Buckinghamshire and the countryside around us for those of you who maybe don't live in the UK um, it's very rural and it's very kind of classic English countryside um, and I also have a great fondness for the travel posters of the sort of 40s and 50s, especially the London Underground and um, London Transport posters. And a lot of those were trying to get people to hop on a train out of London and enjoy the rural countryside, which would have been out to Buckinghamshire um, and places like that where I live. So there's a combination of the fact that this particular print that I'm going to do next is kind of an homage to the travel posters, but it's also genuinely how Buckinghamshire looks. So anyway, this is the drawing for the next print that I'm going to do, and um, we'll keep you posted about that. We might film it or we might just post about it, but whatever happens, you'll see this progressing from the drawing. So I just wanted to show you my very scribbly, very rubbed out drawing. It doesn't always come easy. In fact, this tree was the hardest thing to do, but I finally got there. Anyway, so enough of that. I am now going to do some cutting. And as before, if I think of anything useful to say, I'll say it. Otherwise, I'll just press on with the cutting. Okay. Oh, one thing I have just thought of to say is that I had an inquiry um, from somebody who was asking how deep they could actually cut the lino and did was there a sort of uh, a point where it's too deep. So if you have a look at my lino, you can see I've gone really deep with this down to where the uh, backing, the um, hessian backing, burlap backing, is actually showing through. So there's nothing wrong with going really deep down to that, but if you do go down as far as the backing, be really careful because what can happen is little hairs can start to come up uh, and they can catch the ink when you're printing and spoil the print. So if you do cut down that far, then it's worth being really careful to either trim off the hairs or stick a bit of tape or something over them so that you're not getting those hairs coming up onto your print. So this little bit that I'm cutting at the moment, I'm going considerably shallower than that because it's not a large area and the paper won't go down into the cutaway bit, so I don't need to go so deep. And again, I'm using that tiny little V tool with the Japanese professional tools. Yeah. 
don't know if you can hear it, but it's really windy. And we have some very big beech trees in the garden. So you can hear them in the background blowing about. And actually when it's stormy, it sounds like you're on board a ship. You can actually hear them creaking away in the wind, which I quite like. Um, somebody was asking me what I listen to in the studio. Do I listen to music? Um, no, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of listening to music. I tend to listen a lot to Radio 4 and also to audiobooks and podcasts. So that's kind of my favourite listening. And I should, while we're on the subject of podcasts, give a shout out to my podcast that I uh, produce with co-host Peter Keegan, who is a very fine um, portrait painter. So he and I produce a podcast together. Mr B does all the tricky stuff because he's our sound man. And that comes out weekly. It's called Ask an Artist and you can listen to it wherever you download podcasts. And that's a podcast dealing with the business of making money as a working artist and developing professional skills. So listen out for that if you fancy hearing me talk about the business side of making art with Peter Keegan. So you might notice that I'm a two-handed cutter. I like to have my left hand as a stabiliser. I find that that makes it easier to control and stop the tool when I'm cutting. Here again, I've got a very uneven edge. I want to just break it up a little bit. The other thing about cutting like this is it does tend to keep your hand safe because you've got left hand is, is behind the blade. Um, I always get very worried when I'm teaching and students start cutting like this. I have in the past rammed a blade through my thumbnail so I really recommend that you are careful. So if you watch my last film on cutting, you'll notice that I'm kind of resorting to the similar tool range that I was with the last time. Um, for lino cut, I definitely have my favourites. Japanese woodblock is a little bit different because with Japanese woodblock, you're kind of cutting around a shape and then clearing out around a shape. So the range of tools is slightly different um, and the cutting approach is different. So, but with lino cuts, certainly this tool that I'm using now is probably my all-time favourite. And I've learned to be very careful about sort of counting tools out and counting tools in at the end of the day because it is so easy to throw away a tool by mistake, which is heartbreaking when you're throwing away all the liner you've chopped off.
So in a minute I'm going to do a rubbing of this area so that you can see how it's progressing. But I'm going to cut a little bit more away first. Um, another thing that I've been asked, a couple of things really, a um, couple of questions about do I have a sink in the studio and the answer to that is no. I have uh, two buckets of water, I have a clean bucket of water and I have a bucket of water that I use for washing in. Um, so I don't have a sink down here, my uh, studio is a long way from the house so it's it's sort of quite a long garden and I'm right down at the end of it so to actually dig a trench and then install the plumbing would be pretty difficult and the other thing is that if I had a sink I'd have to sacrifice space for that and I'm not prepared to do that so um, it's not something that I have got or that I particularly miss um, the other thing that somebody was asking was, could they see me cleaning up inks? Um, and I will certainly show that in a later video. And also um, the different ways of cleaning up uh, for Caligo and oil-based inks. So I'll, I'll definitely cover that when I'm on an inking phase. Okay, so I'm going to take a rubbing now to show you how far I've got and what I've been doing. So now I'm going to take a rubbing and again if you remember I talked about these before, these are graphite sticks which are quite cheap to buy and they're really useful and I've also got newsprint here. So all I'm going to do is just have a little So there's the little hillside that um, I've just been working on with the cutting. One of the things that we have been thinking about, and we don't know how to do it yet, but we will try and find out, is possibility of me doing a live feed uh, and live streaming where I'm cutting so that I could actually sort of answer questions and stuff in real time. Um, if you like that idea, please could you comment and let me know and we'll see if we can organise it. So I look forward to hearing from you on that and I hope you'll keep watching the films. Thank you very much for watching.